So here we are on the banks of the Bonnie River Deverin. We're at the Deverin side fishing and we're on Upper Netherdale here today, which is the upper beat of the uh, Deverin side fishing. And I've got my old buddy here, Stevie Munn. Uh, first time to the Deverin, Stevie? First time I've ever been on the Deverin here. And I've fished in Scotland the right few times uh, for trout. I've fished the clay, I've fished the, the tumble. I fished yep. the spay with you okay. earlier in the I year for salmon. Aye. But, um, but First but the first time, time on the Devon, it's Aye. a beautiful river. Well, Stevie, it's a, it's it's one of the classic trout rivers. Yep. Although we're, we're we're here in October, which is a classic salmon time yep. here in the yep. Devon. Of course, but um, but uh, it is a, a really famous, yep. along with the Don, yep. very famous uh, trout river. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about the day, uh, Stevie, was kind of just how you would approach this river. And maybe one or two others, and I would yeah. like to know, for your perspective, how it, how it, how it, the similarities between this and the rivers at home. Is there anything? Aye, there's, uh, there's some rivers back home than the size. You know, the River Main is one of my local rivers in County Antrim. Yep. Um, it gets a it gets a run of a salmon and and a lock run fish called the Dolligan, which is a brown oh. trout that lives in Loch Ness. Runs oh, the rivers, okay. and we fish for them a wee bit like sea trout. Oh, okay. Um, and it's a similar size to this sort of river. Although I don't know how long this river is, but it's a similar width and depth. Uh, places. Okay. Reminds it, me very much of that river. Well, this was this again. At one time, it was a magic sea trout river. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's like every other river in the whole of the UK, the whole uh, of the uh, northern hemisphere. Yeah. I think it's not as yeah. good as it uh, 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 they once were, but but nevertheless, there's still a, still a good number of good sized sea trout. Uh, and, but this is a it's a phenomenal brown trout river uh, here. Now, I'm uh, not a brown trout fisher, although yeah. I have some fantastic memories yeah. of brown trout fishing here. I have to say, Stevie, yeah. but yeah. I'm not a brown trout fisher. Yeah. So this is what I'm going to pick your brain about if you. Wouldn't I mind just right, in the no next problem, wee, no wee, wee, few wee minutes. Um, so on a river like this, um, Stevie, uh, I mean it's it's sort of higher level than sort mm -hmm. of normal. Mm -hmm. I would have said just mm -hmm. now, although it's not high. So if you were if you were uh, approaching this uh, to catch a few trout, I mean, what Aye. kind of setup would you have? Well, on a on, on a river like this, I, I would like a. A ten foot, you know. Well, if it was dry fly fishing, uh, I'd probably go for a nine foot four bit and just stay with my nine foot four bit. But for more versatile fishing, if you want to switch between nymphing, streamer fishing, and dry fly fishing, maybe a ten foot four weight or a ten foot five weight, depending on the size of the trout as well. Of oh, course. okay. So the so yeah. the size of the fish is going to make a difference. The size of the fish will always make a difference. So okay. You know, there's there, there's there's rods. We've got seven weights and eight weights and six weights. Okay. So when we've got three weights and two weights and four weights. All oh, right. So, so so that's kind of for the layman's point of view, Stevie. I, I just thought that that shorter rods were for. I mean, dare I say, sh shorter people. But, <laughs> but, but no, but no, no, it's not that. It's, you can be any height and use these rods. No, I'm not as serious as you know. Yeah. But but I did I, I did think that the shorter rods were purely for the very very small rivers. Aye, but. Not, not, not necessarily, you know. Some, well, some of the small rods are, you know. Like we're doing, we're doing eight foot, uh, six for a three. Okay. That's a, a, a perfect small river, little, little crisp, dry fly upstream nymphin, um, and it's the tactics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the tactics and size of fish that sort of would dictate the rod. So, you know? so when you were designing this whole range of yeah. rods for cadence. And I mean, yep. there's, a, there's a, like a wealth and a whole lifetime's experience went into this, mm -hmm. for sure, Stevie. Yep. But when you were designing this road, this range of roads, so you had you had all that in your mind about the, the ah, size of the different, fish, different the, sizes, yep. um, different techniques as well, which is okay. very important, you know, right. or, or, or fishing situations. If you were lake fishing or lock fishing, as we call it, or, or reservoir fishing or still water fishing different than the river rods really you know okay. so, so there's rods that would you know a, a 10 foot 4 or 10 foot 3 or 10 foot 2 8 foot 8 foot 6 3 and, and the 9 foot 4 and 9 foot 5 they're all traditional river rods really you okay know? And so yeah. for, I mean a 10 foot 2 would seem to be for me I mean I, I, I don't know it would it's seem to be a nymph rod so, oh, so I, I like the, the sound of that Steve, uh, I have to the, say the 10 foot 2 weight is really a nymph rod for your Euro style nymph and it's got okay. really big uh, what's, what, explain a wee bit about Eurostyle nymphing. I don't. I, I, I'm not just sure about that. The Polish and the French and the Czechs okay. uh, and the Spanish, okay. the French, uh, started using heavy nymphs. Uh, and not not so much casting with fly lines, but heavy nymphs and, and, and fishing high sticking. So the, the Americans call it high stick nymphing, and 
and, and, and it's very, very good on, on a on a ten foot two or a ten foot three weight. Okay. You know, because you, you can you can present quick, uh, feel the take, pull the take. Okay. Um, down locking reel seats on it for balance to help the rear lift up because okay. you're doing basically this. Yes. Most of the, the time, you know, and short casts like oh, this. So, so that's the, the nymph sort of uh -huh. rods, and we've uh -huh. got a ten foot three and a ten foot two, which are right. perfect for that sort of okay. for, for style of fishing. Okay. But the ten foot three, you can also it's versatile too. It can be a, a good short dry fly rod as well. You know, you can cast a line with it as well. So okay. So, so you would, if I came here, for instance, would I be if I was if I was fishing dry fly yeah. on the, on the Devon? Because I mean, my 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 experience on the Devon was just as a young lad with a, a fiberglass trout rod yeah, with a double taper line, um, and, it was and that the was same it. And it was starting. just yeah. cast two wet flies doing the down lines. and across. Yeah, yeah. still a great so, tactic. Uh -huh. Wet fly fishing down and across. You spider fishing. Um, and I, I, I still use it a lot, you know, at, down the cross fishing, um, still a great tactic. And what can I, what can I tackle, what kind of rod would you be using for that? Again, scenario? you could do that, depending on, you could do that with, with the 8 foot uh, 3 weight, you could do it with the, you could do it with any of them all to be fair, but, but, one, but once you get into the heavier rods, the, the, the sixes and the sevens, yep. they're really for your still water fishing, okay. or, or your migratory trout yes. fishing, or your yes. sea trout fishing. So, do, you know? I mean, in the in the salmon world, I think it's a matter of preference for technique yes. for sure. Yes, I, I definitely get that. Yeah. Some some people, although some people just don't like a, a, a short rod, some Aye. people rather a long rod. Some yeah. people don't like a spay line; they would rather a double taper line. Aye. So, is it the same sort of thing? I, 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 it does. It, uh, in, a, in a way, there's tools for the job, Ian. There's there's, t there's there's tools for the job, and, and but some people are, you know. I know a guy that really likes fishing a, a nine foot four weight, and, and he uses that for for his dry fly fishing and his upstream nymphing, and, and it's a very versatile rod. Yes, but but a more versatile rod could be your ten foot rods. Okay, with with, with that, so uh, it's horses for courses to a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and getting the right tool for the right job, you know. Right. And what you about know. what about reserve? Reservoir, Stevie. Um, fishing off a boat, is there anything s special? Well, I do a lot of lock fishing. So okay. I do a lot of lock fishing in Ireland. We're, 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 we have great locks in uh -huh. Ireland, you know. And uh -huh. um, you know, and every year we, we go away and, and fish locks. But I, I like a long rod if I'm wet fly fishing. Okay. Uh, so an 11 foot 6 weight or a 10 foot 6 weight okay. would be my, my go-to sort of wet fly yeah. rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes I would have the ten foot six or a, or a, a nine foot six six weight for okay. dry fly. So sometimes I have two rods set up. Yep. One purposely for wet fly fishing. And another. And for another dry. for dry fly oh, fishing. Okay. Okay. Um, Interesting that because aye. I was in I was in Iceland last year. I had one of the best experiences. I've seen, I've seen Honestly, of photographs. It was, it was just magic. Amazing. Was really magic. Aye, amazing. And it was a river that wasn't even half this size, aye. and it was full of these Arctic char and Brilliant. brown trout. Brilliant. And the guy when I when I when I go there, the guy's got this seven weight, aye. and he's a he's a trout fisherman, aye. and I'm a decent trout caster. Aye, definitely, I'm not I'm, I'm not a brilliant trout caster, but I'm a decent trout caster. But interestingly, this seven weight, I felt for the for the fish that we were targeting. The size of fish. We're, we're it was overkill. Overkill, Aye. it really was. Aye. And and because it was such a fantastic afternoon's fishing, yeah. I just thought, shit, if I had, a, if I had something much more flexible, Aye. it would have been brilliant. Aye, of this course, of course. It would have been, really really been better with a four weight or a three weight or even a five weight. Aye, okay. You know what I mean? Aye. Aye. Once you get to the six and sevens, you know, it's, it's a bigger. That's kind of mere to do with the size of the fish and maybe conditions. Yes, of course, Stevie. of course. Aye. Um, yep. Aye, certainly, if you're getting two and three pound fish, a four weight, a five weight, you know, great, great rods. You yes, know, yes. You know, another, another. And, and better presentation too, and slightly, that. slightly better presentation. You know, you can land them nice and gentle. You know, if there's aye, a fish feeding. Aye. Uh, you know, you don't want a big splashy lane coming down. You want the <laughs> well, nice presentation. That's, that's exactly because you know? I, I always look for a tight loop. You see, yeah. And and for me, uh, that was what was wrong that Aye. day. The loop was too tight, so the fly was going Fing! and splash in the water. Spooking on the fish, you know. Aye. So instead of a nice little, a wee bit more open loop, yep. and it would yep. have been better yep. probably. Yep. Yep. But I had another experience, and that was in a lake in Iceland. Oh, you told me about this, the big, everybody, ah, the big fish. So we caught this really big fish in the lake. Beautiful. And uh, when I was told to go there, I have to say, I was told to take a five weight and a seven weight. So yeah. I duly took yeah. a five and a seven weight to the to Lake Thingamy thing, Thingamy Jig. <laughs> um, so I took I took this uh, two rods, yeah. but I also took my little switch rod. Yeah. And and I was glad I took that one. Yeah. Because 
Although I had some fantastic fun with the five weight with the dry fly yeah. um, and the seven weight with the stream, I needed to get out a wee bit further and Aye. I wished I'd had my double hander. Aye. That microspray would have been absolutely ideal Aye. at that for, time. For casting for the distance Aye. to Aye. get further. Aye, and Aye. in the windy conditions Aye. as well, it would have been yeah. perfect, yeah. really, really yeah. perfect. So, it's, so what we're saying really, Stevie, it's like horses for courses. It yeah. is, it is. It is. It is, yeah. Aye. Aye. What but, were them big fish feeding on? Ian, it, well, and, I'll tell you what they were, I can tell you, because the, the lake is is um, it's big, it's the size of Loch Lomond, it's big, yeah, it's a yeah, really, yeah, yeah. really big lake, and so the, the uh, brown trout are the apex predator in there, right, so right. there's no pike in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in Iceland, and so they're feeding on Arctic char, and every one of that big ones, when you when you pulled it aside, it was, it was coughing up fish, so, so what was happening, they were coming into the shallows, yeah. where, where we were targeting yeah. them, to, to digest, but I mean, so, I mean, uh, brown trout are just like me. They're just they're just <laughs> greedy little buggers. So even though they're full, Aye. I mean, it's like me and the table. I can be up to here. I've not yeah. even got a bit of room left, you yeah. know. But there's a nice meringue. I have to have a wee go at that Aye. as well, Aye. you know. Aye. Hence, hence my Aye. portly pot. <laughs> You know, Aye. but that's the way it is, Stevie. Yeah, that, that is, it's and, interesting. And that. It's it interesting. That. Look, it one, one of the rivers I fish in, in Norway is called the Tresal River. Okay. And I go there every year to fish for grayling and trout. Okay. And the Gloma as well. But we've noticed over the last few years, we catch a lot of grayling on dry flies. Yes. But we hardly ever catch any trout in the dry flies oh, in that particular no, area. But no, when no, we do no. catch them, They've got they've got fish inside them. The, aye, the change, aye, so the, aye, the change, so the cannibal. Bad. You know, they, go, aye, they start going aye, fish eaters. Yes, and, yes, and that's what's yeah, obviously yeah, happening yeah, in Iceland. That's yeah, why they get so yeah, big. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I it's know, interesting. And, oh, it does. Mm. It is mm. really, really mm -hmm. interesting. Steve. And the tactics would change. Absolutely, then, absolutely. You know. absolutely. And kind of local knowledge. So that's where yeah. local. It's like here. Yeah. It's just like here. Yeah. Local knowledge comes right into it. And if you've got a gilly like David, he can he can manage to push you into the right places at the right time. I mean, when I was when I was young. I mean, it was always because because we we're when we we're talking about trout, it was it was forty five degrees and swing the fly, and it was always over rocks. And it seemed to be just behind a rock or something. Trout get loves these trout, head and know? holes, rocks, and, and trout also love where there's going to be food brought to them. Yes, you know, like if if you look at that there, you when you're fishing a lot of rivers, you'd say yes. fish the bubble lane. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, because Aye. the food is concentrated food on that, 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 and that, that yeah. fish is sitting That's there, static, just coming up, up. Boom, boom, yes, you know. yes. So they're, yes. They're, they're, you know, they're. They're not, I was going to say they're smart, but you can't, they've got this very small brain, but yeah. they know where food's coming from, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. And well, it's their an domain, elevator isn't of food. It? Is it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Aye. Amazing. But here, pal, um, I'm going to wrap it up just, just now, okay. but thanks for the wee insight into that rod, pal. Oh, no, don't worry. And man. here, your help in the range has been oh, immense. Thank you. Thank immense, you, thank you for Honestly. asking. <laughs> yeah. Good lad. Good lad. Well done. So... That was that was old Stevie um, here on the River Devron, and uh, I would love to be able to say he's going to catch a trout now. But as it's after the trout season, we're going to have to try a salmon. Yes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.